Hello everyone, welcome to a very special CES edition of Nope Sorry, the debate show where I, Jeff Bacalar, argue with my friends and colleagues over three rounds of dead serious debate and discourse. You got that? I'm ready. Joining us today on the show is the one and only Claire Riley from CNET Australia. Hello, Claire. Hello, good to Thanks be so here. Thanks so much for being here. Did you almost try an Australian accent? You no. <laughs> you, I told you before, I'm only good at English ones, not Australia ones. Thank you for embarrassing me. I will okay. test that out later. So here's how the show works. Claire and I will receive a topic, and we're going to have 90 seconds to hash it out. At the end of the round, we'll be uh, awarded a total of five points between us, depending on how well we made our case. Assigning those points will be our judge for the judge for today, Lexi Savides. Lexi, thank you so much for judging us. You're very welcome. I feel like I need to say good day to like round out the Australian contingent here. So I'm the, so I'm the only one who doesn't have an accent. That's fine. <laughs> All right, Claire and I flipped a coin backstage. Remember that? It was great. <laughs> I'm going to be going first in rounds one and three. Lexi, let's get to the first topic. What is it? All right, for round one, CES has become the battleground for Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant, but only one can reign supreme. So who won CES, Alexa or the Google Assistant? You have 90 seconds on the clock, go. Okay, uh, I'm gonna say that Alexa won CES. It's, uh, it's the underdog for sure, but one, they're giving out bananas, and that's a, that's a, a point in my column. I also think I'm very much ingrained into the Amazon ecosystem. I buy everything I've ever owned on Amazon. I'm invested in it. I like to know that Alexa, I can take some comfort in knowing that that technology will sort of lean to what I'm purchasing. I don't have that com uh, uh, accessibility with Google. And, um, you know, look, I, I think I like Alexa's voice better. There, I said it. Bam. It's controversial. <laughs> all right, what do, you, what do you think? All right, okay, you're wrong. Okay. First of all, I don't need bananas. I brought my own. Yes. Whoa! Banana shoes. Second of all, have you seen the It's a Small World ride? Yeah. Have you seen Okay, I don't need oh, to go oh, and get a free there. banana when I can go on a simulation of a Disney ride that probably knows all of my personal data and history, is tapped into my phone, and I, I don't believe that Alexa versus Google, Alexa's really going to win. Also, in Australia, Amazon has only just arrived, so we haven't had the Amazon Prime two-day delivery hook it to my veins in three hours. We are only just starting to get that, so right, Google so you reigns know. supreme. So you just, it's not your fault. You don't know yet. It's oh, not, yeah. It's Australia's we're so, fault. We're so it's stupid Australia. over Look, in Australia. You know, everyone everyone keeps time. saying that Alexa and Google have it uh, in both of their uh, uh, products, so that's good for consumers. Uh, Lexi, what, what do you think? That was a tough one. I, Jeff, I really loved the banana point because, you know, who doesn't love a free banana? However, at the Google stand, they're giving out, like, Google Home Minis and you know, fanny really? packs, free things really? that are more valuable than a banana, I would say. Probably more than about 19 cents, I think. Not as nourishing. <laughs> Not as nourishing. No, you don't feel as good afterwards, but free swag is free swag. Mm. Uh, Claire, I really liked your point about how, obviously, these assistants, like, coming to Australia, I know the pain points that we don't get that technology as fast as we do here in the U.S. So I think for this one, I'm going to give Claire three points and Jeff two. Well done. She left for Amazon. That's yeah. what she's saying. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's all right. Very good. It's fine. I know that this is a confusing process for you that I'm winning, but... It's, 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 we've got 66% of the show left. Just watch it, Claire. <laughs> all right. Uh, round two, Lexi. Take it away. All right, so round two. We know here at CES a lot of tech is so over the top and luxury and luxurious trash, I want to say. I mean, <laughs> it's just so opulent, it's crazy. But which self-indulgent product is more badass? Bell's helicopter drone taxi or Furion Design's luxury smart yacht, also called the Adonis? 90 seconds on the clock. Go. The helicopter. First of all, it's a Bell helicopter. Why people haven't been calling this the Bellycopter blows my mind. <laughs> it's electric vertical takeoff and landing, so it can fly up in the air, turn its propellers, and move forward. These things are the way of the future. You're going to have nodes all over the city that let you hop, skip, and jump. It's going to be a multi multimodal transport system. Also, you're in a boat, man. I can fly over you and use my, I don't know, rich person missiles to blow up your boat. I assume that's how the future's going to work, right? Rich person missiles. I believe that EV toll, 
Vertical takeoff and landing, it's the future. We're not going to use cars anymore. It's not a militarized drone. <laughs> sure it is. No, okay, fine. If you are confident in flying around in a self-driving, drive a flying taxi drone. I absolutely am. All the best luck to you. If my smart yacht stops being a smart yacht, it's still a boat, and I'm still going to be okay in the water. I'm not going to fall out of the sky into a fiery death. What happens when you reach the shore, though? You're always going to need an inlet or yeah. a fjord. No, no, that's, look, all I got to say is this. Smart yachts, you, you're away from people. You don't have to worry about dealing with other sort of like, there's a lot of air traffic. You're going to have to compete with a lot of other drones in this future where we're having delivery drones and self drive Look, you're on the high seas by yourself. There's something soothing about that. Plus, to live that life of love. It's definitely a more luxurious experience. Smart yachts. Smart drone. <laughs> Lexi. Nicely done to both of you. Claire, I really love your point about just being able to cruise over the top of everything, avoid all of that traffic. But Jeff, I appreciate your points about the fact that this is technology you can get now. You can get this yacht now. I mean, you can't technically buy it, but if you have enough money, I think you can. Whereas flying to cars and flying taxis, like that is still several years away. And who knows if that's ever going to become reality anyway. And also, Jeff, you forgot to say, I'm on a boat because that's what boat. you do when you're on a smart But yacht. I don't lose points. You get points for that. Three points to Jeff, two points wow. to Claire. Wow, okay, it's 5-5. Five, five. Neck and neck. Uh, this is the final round. I didn't know the scene at stage would be so thrilling today, Jeff. If, well, I'm excited to be here. That's what this show brings. Yep. Thank you for recognizing that. Lexi, final round, the tiebreaker. What is the topic, please? All right, the final round, number three, to break the tie. Each year, the CNET crew comes to Las Vegas to cover CES, and some of us are here for more than a week, and we are dried up like old prunes because <laughs> of it. This is more of a question of which hotel is your spirit animal? Maybe it's the Flamingo, because you're fabulous, but while this might be a nightmare scenario, what hotel would you choose to live in forever? 90 seconds on the clock, go. Okay, I'm gonna choose Circus Circus. Ooh, okay. Yikes. I know. I'll have you know, Claire, that Circus Circus is an underappreciated gem. Everyone knows it. What other hotel on the strip has comically low ceilings like Circus <laughs> Circus? And the best thing about Circus Circus is they're like, oh, this. One circus is not enough. We gotta, we gotta double up. It's so we good. Gotta, we named it. We twice. gotta do circus <laughs> twice. What other hotel has the has the charisma to do that kind of thing? I'll That's tell amazing. You. And one more thing, Claire. Everyone in Las Vegas will tell you this. It's true. All the locals will tell you this. Circus Circus shadily has the best steakhouse in. Mm. Yeah, we'll say Nevada. Okay. And yes, people are clapping. And I'll have you know. It's called the Steakhouse. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Well, if that's the sign of the creativity that you can expect at Slumsville Circus Circus, I'm going to say the El Cortez Hotel. It has been open since 1941. It used to be owned by Bugsy Siegel. They have an Elvis impersonator there that is so hard to beat. You, you're not going to find anything better on Fremont Street. Why are you down on the strip? You've got to be on Fremont Street where everyone's old. You find dollar slots. I just want to live my best life with a perm, dark sunglasses, a cigarette, and just yelling at people across the bar like, get me another drink. That is my future. <laughs> Why do you want at, that? Because that is, that's my spirit animal. So move to Florida. No, I'm going to be living in the El Cortez. <laughs> All right, I kind of <laughs> like that. Lexi, who won the game? Oh, this is a tough one because mm. I love both of your points. Jeff, I empathize with those short ceilings. I'm tall but I, I kind of have a soft spot for short ceilings. I don't know why. It makes me feel claustrophobic, and I hate it, but I love it at the same time. So I appreciate that. Claire, you need to do marketing for the El Cortez because that <laughs> pitch was 100%. I'm just like, I learned some history. Mm -hmm. I learned exactly what I can do there, and uh, now I just want to go out and buy a gold gown and just you know rock out all night there. I got, I got one you can borrow, don't worry. Oh, this is a tough one. I think Claire just takes it with three, Jeff two. I'm sorry. It's okay. But it was an amazing, amazing debate from both of you. You can All come right. to my private suite there. Yeah, I'll smoke a, a, a carton of cigarettes, I yeah, guess. Yeah, it'll be great. Um, <laughs> we always have a winner. What did Claire win? It's coming in hot. Whoa. Oh, you want you <laughs> half a wrap. Oh you want half of a, a backstage. This looks Is like a mine? beautiful medley of chicken oh Caesar. There you go. No, it's tofu. You must eat it all in one bite. Okay. Or <laughs> On stage? No, not on stage. We wouldn't I make you do that. I want to eat this. I uh, want to eat this. This has been great, even though I lost. 
It's been a pleasure it's debating you. It's been a delight. Thank you so much for having the Australians on. Absolutely. Lexi, thank you so much for judging. Thank you for having me. It's been a fun time. Uh, if you'd like to submit a topic for our next episode, just leave a comment in the section below. We air new episodes every Thursday at youtube.com slash CNET. When we come back after a break, we'll bring you the top five trends of CES 2019. That's up next. Thanks again for watching.